Welcome everyone to Love Evolution, the path to union. This class is an introduction to the upcoming Venus Pluto cycle. So for those of you who have been with me in Love Evolution, you know um, this is the core calling of my heart, of my work. Um, I have been, a, I am a student of evolutionary astrology and of Jeffrey Wolf Green. And also I am an astrologer who very much works in this realm of transmitting, transmission style, channeling the chart and the present moment through the lens of astrology. And Venus and Mars and Venus and her relationship to Mars and Venus and her relationship to Pluto have been the core foundation of my astrological work. I feel like on a soul level, everything comes back to Pluto. And this, you know, corresponds to Jeffrey Wolf Green's teachings relative to, you know, Pluto being the archetype of the soul and the path or the placement or the transits of Pluto reflecting the evolutionary journey of the soul. And if we understand what that journey is, right? All souls are born into the physical body. We in this lifetime have a name and a family and a, a life experience that is reflected by the natal chart, reflected by the transits. You know, we if you whether or not you believe in past lives, if you believe in past lives, then there, you know, there is evolutionary information relative to where we came from as a soul, how we've been evolving, and then what we're choosing here now, right? We're, here now matters most to me and to us, to our soul journey. Here now is what informs where we're going. And um, the transits are often reflecting in astrology what might be to come, right? Where we might be headed. In my perspective, it never trumps and no astrologer knows the will of God, the will of source of our creator. And from my perspective, it is also always not, never causative, but reflective, right? So I look often, and most of my practice is looking at the chart of the present moment to reflect what's here now, what is, and that chart encompasses everyone and everything in this world, in this universe that is a part of our soul's journey. And what is the soul's journey? It is, you know, the soul is the essence of unconditional love, pure source, the essence of God, divinity, creation that gets reflected in who you are, who you are born to be. And in our forgetting who we truly are, the source that we are, where we came from, we play out a life and karmic experiences and dynamics and patterns and relationship to remember who we are. That remembrance in my, you know, theology is the remembering of the love that we are, of the source that we are, that everything is a call to that love, that the callings that we feel, the longings that we have, the desires that we have are calling us to remember that love. That is love evolution, right? And the conditioning we receive, the fear that we face, the challenges that we face, the traumas and the dramas and the, the patterns and the cycles in our life are reflective of what happened in that separation from source. And in evolutionary astrology, Jeffrey Wolf Green talks about resistance or cooperation, Right, cooperation is our participation with love to remember love, to return to love, to return to our source. Resistance is everything that is in the way of that. That can be a huge boulder. It can be big traumas. It can be the past. It can be relationships that we struggle and suffer uh, to let go of what's not love and to return to love. Right. And this is all the soul work 
that we're doing here on this planet. This is what we are, you know, why we are here, what we're doing. It's all remembering. It's all remembering the present moment. It's all remembering where we are, who we are, what we are here to do. And so this is the calling for me of these class series, everything that I offer, everything that I do, how I show up in my family, how I live my life, you know, what the work that I do in my personal relationships and this offering, these offerings of my core teaching as an astrologer. And I call myself an intuitive astrologer. My roots are in actually all forms of Western um modern, ancient, Hellenistic, and evolutionary. And then there is just me, which is this amalgamation of all these things and how I teach. And my primary teacher is um, Jeffrey Wolf Green, uh, the founder of evolutionary astrology. So that is, um, that's sort of my, at least my core reference point for this Pluto work. And it's evolved in so many ways in this, in these years, as I've been a, an evolutionary astrologer, intuitive astrologer is what I call myself now, a days. But uh, so let's tune into the present moment, because this is really the point from which I'm speaking to you now. For those of you who have been in my Love Evolution course, we have worked through Venus Right, we've been following her since her conjunction to Pluto. That conjunction to Pluto opened up this Venus and Capricorn cycle where she was with Mars, actually. They were together. They've been together in Leo, right? And I've been following her journey with Mars, following her journey with Pluto. We've gone, you know, pretty much all the way around the Zodiac in many respects, at least in the way that we followed the moon and Mars has gone, you know, all the way around. I've been doing this for a while. So if you wanted to do that work and weren't able to join me, the full love evolution, the last six months is available, is online, and it can be accessed um, through that course. But where we're starting from in this place now, we will be working with this Venus in Leo cycle as our beginning point. And right now we are in her cycle as a retrograde Venus in what many astrologers consider her underworld phase or the beginning of her underworld phase, which started just uh, about a week ago, uh, a week ago last Sunday, when she made her inferior conjunction with the sun at 20 degrees Leo. So now the sun is separated from her and she is moving backwards. She's going to be moving away from the sun. Mercury, Ven uh, Mercury, Mars, and the moon, since this last new moon in Leo, where the moon was with Venus, have all moved on into the sign of Virgo. And since I began the last ev love evolution cycle, the nodes of the moon have moved from their places. They were in Taurus and Scorpio, where Venus was the ruler of that Taurus north node. And now she is the ruler of this south node in Libra. She also remains the ruler of Jupiter and Uranus, as they are in the sign of Taurus. And Mars has moved on being now the ruler of the North Node in Aries. Mars is ruling um, this Capricorn, this retrograde Capricorn Chiron. So, you know, and, and this work has been very deeply tied to the Pluto square to the nodal axis. So if we think about it, Pluto is in Capricorn ruled by Saturn. The Pluto polarity point, as they reference it in evolutionary astrology, is the oppositional point to Pluto, which is 28 degrees Cancer right now. And um, so we have Father Saturn, Mother Moon, Mars Masculine, uh, Libra Venus Feminine. 
We have the cardinal axis of life being activated for all of us collectively on an evolutionary perspective. What does that mean? What does that mean for our lives? It means, well, very much so, that the deepest Plutonian work that the evolutionary, you know, in evolutionary astrology, they call it a skip step. They call this square to the nodes, right? One of those nodes is a resolution node for Pluto. And in just layman's terms, that is the node that was last conjunct to Pluto. And so in the case of our journey, the node that was last conjunct to Pluto was the south node. And that south node is ruled by Venus. So Venus is ruling the resolution of Pluto, which is all that core, those core shadow dynamics. Venus is ruling actually the resistance, Capricorn, or the cooperation, Cancer, right? Venus is calling us to resolve the south node, the past, and Mars is calling us to embark upon the future, the, the, the movement towards the north node. And interestingly enough, from the evolutionary perspective, Venus resolves through the north node. So Venus's resolution in the present moment and for the coming you know, months until she makes a new conjunction, she'll conjoin with the South Node during our Love Evolution um, class series. We'll, and we'll tune into that as we work our way through her movements. But Venus's resolution from her last conjunction, which was to the North Node, um, is intertwined with Mars. And so when calling this class series, the path to union, not only for the fact that Pluto is resolving through the South Node, Venus is resolving through the North Node, Venus rules the South Node, Mars rules the North Node, but what happens in their culmination, the end of this journey that we're all embarking on, that we're all evolving through, is their conjunction together, Venus and Mars in Aquarius, coinciding with the conjunction that they will each have with Pluto in Aquarius, with this all moving towards Pluto finishing its, you know, core evolutionary cycle in the sign of Capricorn, and finally moving into the sign of Aquarius. Now, all of this will finish in 2024, where Pluto will be complete with its cycle in 2024, in November of 2024. And I'm going to be following this journey all the way through with, with everyone who joins me in the container of Love Evolution. Obviously, I will continue to um, share my ideas, my feelings on my monthly, uh, uh, on a on a monthly basis in my class series and on a weekly basis in you know the larger um, YouTube community that follows me on YouTube, where you can find me every week tuning into the week ahead. So this is a really powerful time, right? We're in this new moon. We're in the retrograde phase of Venus. My current Love Evolution students will finish this cycle with me tomorrow. We will kick off the last month where we will be working in the retrograde archetype. And the retrograde archetype is all about the deepest internalized soul work and evolution, right? And that's preparing us, laying the groundwork for what is to come, right? Which is for our journey to take us all the way back to the path to union. All the way back, right? I say back, all the way forward, however you want to think about it, all the way through, right? We're, we could think of ourselves right now as being deep in the cocoon of Venus, right? Deep in the heart of her retrograde cycle, the, the inferior conjunction, the Kazemi that we just had last Sunday, is um, it's the indicator of the midpoint of the retrograde cycle. We're deep in the heart of what I would call the retrograde season, 
where by the end of August, August 29th, every single planet except for Mars and Jupiter will be retrograde. Obviously, the sun and the moon are never retrograde. But um, And then by September 4th, Venus stations direct and Jupiter stations retrograde. So we have just like very intense. And then only Mars, you know, Mars and Venus will be the only planets um, by September 5th that are not retrograde. So there's so much asking us to go within, go within, go within, go within. And it's like, I've been asking myself, how the hell do I go within and do what it is necessary to do in order to do the work that would prepare me, that would prepare us, that would prepare our lives for the evolution that's wanting to emerge, right? How do I get into a state of cooperation, with this evolution? How do I face the resistance that is present, right? There can be so much resistance in our life relative to the things that seem like they might be stripped away, that they might be breaking down, that they might be not working, you know? And what is Cancer, Capricorn, uh, Libra, Aries, right? This is our will, our desires, Aries. This is our self, right? Um, Leo relates to the self, Aries relates to the individual instinct, Libra relates to the other, Libra relates to the relationship. What is Cancer Capricorn? This is our deepest and most core tenderness, our vulnerability, our humanity, our womb, our femininity, our mother, our mother history. And what is um or sorry, Capricorn, that's Cancer. Capricorn is the structures, the foundation of our lives, the institutions of our lives, the father, right? Saturn, time, discipline, structure. And all of these things are interrelated to one another. What do I mean by that? Even if you look at your natal chart and let's say you don't have planets in certain signs, like right now we can see in this, in this chart, we we don't have any planets here in this Sag house, Sagittarius house. We don't have any planets here in this Scorpio house, right? But there is an, they're not empty. It just means that these planetary presences are elsewhere and they are related to other things. So where's Jupiter? Jupiter is here in the sign of Taurus. What's Jupiter related to? Taurus, that's Venus. Where's Venus? In Leo. What's Leo related to? The sun, ruled by the sun, right? So we have these interrelationships happening all the time. These relationships will change as the planetary placements will change, right? Here's our north node, Aries. It's ruled by Mars. What's Mars doing? Mars is moved on to Virgo. And is and Virgo is related to or ruled by Mercury. And where is that Mercury? With the moon right now, telling us that the stories of our lives, that the details of our lives, that the unfinished, unsolved, unresolved, and that the direction really, the core calling, the story that we're telling about ourselves, the mind and the thoughts that we have are all related to this North Node journey, which is expressing itself, you know, it, through Mercury, through the moon right now, right? And this is all changing through the present moment. And we have so much, you know, with this Libra South Node and Venus that is also co continuously going to be relating back to this Jupiter Uranus, Jupiter and Uranus have been a big part of this journey because both Venus and the sun and every other planet that came through Leo squared Jupiter, squared Uranus. Venus will come back during our cycle and square Jupiter and square Uranus again. And um, she will do it again for Jupiter in her retrograde, and she will do it again for Jupiter and Uranus in her direct phase as well. These squares have been critical breakthroughs, breakdowns, changes, resolutions, revolutions in our evolutionary journey. 
And all of this relates to how our lives are embodied around physical, financial security, right? The Taurus Scorpio axis being our physical, financial, emotional, sexual, relational, you know, procreational, we should call, axis of the fixed identities. And the other aspects of those fixed identities are Leo Aquarius, right? The self, self and individualized identity of Leo and Aquarius, the identity of the community, the intellectual, you know, and that's where we're ending up, right? In this sense of community and new creation, new, you know, Aquarius, one of the realizations I had about Aquarius, I was uh, in the in the forest at a gathering called Singing Alive, which is all about singing, voice activation, Venus, Libra, voice expression. And I had this realization that only an Aquarius can be in a forest surrounded by a bunch of weird people doing their thing, being themselves, being and feel completely alone, alienated, different, <laughs> and not belonging. Like, oh, that's like, you know, I don't know about you, but if like, I am an Aquarius, and I really can feel that no matter where I go, there I am, no matter where I am, I can feel as if I either belong, and I am so much a part of my community, this is my soul tribe, these are my people, and I can also have that Saturn side of Aquarius, right? The Uranus side is the breakthrough side of Aquarius and the evolutionary side of Aquarius, the side of ourselves that knows that we are from the future, that we don't belong here anyways, and that it is totally cool to not belong, but that that our uniqueness and our individuality is exactly what makes us an expression of the divine. And the Saturn side of it can be like the loneliness, the isolation, the alienation, that we are so different and so outsider. And that is a very also a very Jupiter element of that um, archetype as well, right? So we're we're totally we're dealing with all these archetypes in this present moment that including Saturn being in the sign of Pisces along with Neptune calling us to the deeper path of forgiveness, right? Calling us to the deeper discipline of the present moment of our spiritual path and practice and inviting us to the healing journey that is this course of life that we're living, you know? And so as we move into love evolution, the path to union each one of our classes will be devoted to a movement of Venus through her cycle. We will begin September 8th with Leo and Juno, and then we will move into eclipse season with the Virgo Venus. We will tune into the Libra Venus archetype and her movement across the South Node. We will uh get into the underworld venus are like she will be fully in the underworld during her scorpio venus cycle we will emerge into our freedom and truth and possibilities and the true path with venus and sagittarius and we will complete an aquarius with venus and pluto and her conjunction with mars and we will also, for those who are interested in joining me, be in um, in this cycle, there'll be two retreat opportunities. I'm looking at a retreat opportunity during the eclipse season um, in Mount Shasta, California, in Northern California. And that will be a Leo or a Libra eclipse uh, portal, uh, healing in the vortex. Um, I will be accompanied by some dear friends in the Shasta area, and there will be a total opportunity for replenishment and nourishment and healing during that time. And then we will complete the path to union 
in the south of France with a retreat. Um, my family and I will be ch channeling, you know, in the south of France. My partner, my family partner, Ari Moshe Wolf, who is also evolutionary astrologer by trade, and um, will be there doing a little weekend retreat the weekend before this class series closes to really culminate the uh, Venus, Mars, Pluto energies. And so this is like, you can do the whole class series all online. You can join all of the classes live. You can join all of them via recording. There's no requirement that you be in person in any part of this. And I'm I'm placing these two retreats as optional opportunities for people to dive deeply with me in person. And those two retreats are not, you don't, you're not required to be a love evolution participant in order to join those retreats. So just to name that. But I, for those of you who are watching this free class, I want you to understand for yourself, even if you never join me in any of these classes, what is coming in, in the months ahead and how these Venus cycles are. So we're going to give a little attunement to each of these cycles as she goes through her, um, you know, her journey. And we're beginning the class series with the Leo Juno cycle. Now, Juno is an important part of this journey. She reflects, she is the wife of Jupiter. She is the, um, you know, the reflection of the committed divine feminine counterpart to Jupiter, the, the calling to our commitment. And where is she with Venus in this time? She is in the sign of Leo. So this is about our calling to our sovereign commitment to ourselves, to our hearts, to what is most true and vulnerable within us. And what's interesting about, oh, I just got chills. Um, what's interesting about this Leo Juno cycle is that her counterpart, Jupiter, is ruled by Venus and is retrograde in the sign of Taurus. So this is a really important um, and significant, you know, element of Jupiter's cycle because Jupiter is really um, internalizing that Taurus embodiment function. Taurus being our our physical financial reality. I will be also kicking off a group at the beginning of September. Um, it called growing together. I have another video coming out this week about the whole growing together group container. And that is really devoted to our growth. And it really pertains so much to Jupiter, right? Growth of our abundance, our physical financial resources, growth of our gifts, growth of our embodiment, growth of our heart. And I also find it really significant that we're beginning in the September time as Venus will be turning and Ven Jupiter will be turning and Juno will be together. Like there's, I choose all of these dates intentionally. There's so much intentionality between all of these, um, you know, containers because this is the work, right? And we're, we're called to grow and evolve as we relate to our resources, physical, financial, um, emotional, our sovereignty, right? Our commitments to our heart, to our emotions. And interestingly enough, at this Venus cycle, Mars will be ruled by Venus. <laughs> um, Mars will be moving his way towards the South Node. <laughs> so this is really an important a beginning point in our journey because Mars is leading the way, Venus is committing herself. We will be seeing, all, you know, Venus is opposite Hygieia in Aquarius. The v, Hygieia is the goddess of health and well being. She's in the sign of Aquarius, reflecting so deeply the calling around our mental mental health, um, our thoughts are, you know, and Mercury is also pointing us back to our thoughts. So in this first cycle, we'll be really turning into that commitment of our, 
whole being and how we are wholly committed to our hearts. And then we move on in our next class to the Venus in Virgo cycle. And I find what's so interesting about this particular cycle. So we're, we're going to be walking together. That's the beauty of these class series is that I design everything so that we can grow together, that we can walk together, that we can be witnessed with one another, that we can be held in a container. Venus will have just moved through her opposition to Saturn, who will be at the end of his retrograde cycle. Pluto will be now direct and will be entering the eclipse season with our first eclipse on the south node in the sign of Libra. Mercury will have completed its entire retrograde cycle. Can you believe it? We're, we're about a few days away from Mercury stationing retrograde. And by the time we get to our second class, we will have completed that entire retrograde cycle. Wow, who knows what we will have gone through by then. That's the beauty of also these classes is that I will catch you in the present moment and we will be walking together, you know, really working it out and carrying and sharing and holding one another and holding the, I'll be holding the container of this work. Um, and Juno will be following along Venus. She's going to be moving along with Venus, but she'll be at 28 degrees Leo, which for those of you who are following the last class cycle, right? That 28 degrees Leo was a super important point. It is the in conjunct point of the Yod, the finger of God that's happening in the skies. Um, and I, I may talk a bit about it in the week ahead coming up because it actually gets activated this week very deeply. Um, but that yod is v uh, is you know going to be crossed through by Venus first. It was the station degree for Venus in her cycle with Pluto this last cycle. Juno passes through it in the eclipse season, and the other leg of that finger of God is Neptune. So we've got um, Pluto, da, 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 you know, moving through that yacht. It's really the finger of God is like the apex. It's the push point. And the apex point is pointing to the very core uh, resolution, right? It's like legs, you know, point or the top of the pyramid, right? And this is, a, I don't know what which kind of triangle that is. Maybe somebody knows, but there's a couple of kinds of triangles. There's the equilateral triangle. I think it's the is isosceles triangle, um, but the where the legs are separated by a sextile, right? And they're pointing towards this head, um, which is Juno in this eclipse season. And here, interestingly enough, during eclipse season, Mercury will be a huge part of this eclipse season. Mercury will be working towards crossing the south node. Mercury will be the ruler of Venus. So, so much about our communication and in relationships will be really heavily activated during this eclipse season. And I will be doing an eclipse season um, masterclass that will only be available to my Growing Together students or those who register individually for the masterclass. But um, that it's automatically, everyone who's in my Growing Together group will get access to every masterclass that I do during the um, next six months that as a part of that, as just like my gift to you. And um, I will be tuning in to the full completion eclipses at the end of this year um, that are really powerful. These are like the closing portals. And those portals opened up when the nodes were in Taurus and Scorpio. They Those portals are closing with the nodes in Aries and Libra. That is very significant. And what's interesting about the closing of those portals and it really the opening of the Libra-Aries eclipse cycle for this next year and a half is that Mars is in the sign of Scorpio. So Mars and Pluto are ruling the Scorpio 
archetype and Mars is leading the way, Mars will have already cleared that system, right? Mars has got a lot of work to do to, in order for us to come to union, right? The divine feminine and the divine masculine, the counterparts have their work to do. Venus's work in her retrograde is all about the internalized work of the heart. Mars is in uh, Virgo, kind of clearing the way, clearing out, you know, clearing the purifying through Virgo. And then Venus comes through Virgo after, and Mars is in the way in, you know, clearing the way in the purification of Scorpio. Now, whether you're in a same sex or queer relationship or a heterosexual normative relationship that, you know, we all, whether you identify as a cisgendered male or female, or you have a different gender identity that is unique to your own expression of sexuality or um, personal identification, right? This is Aquarius, this is an Aquarius thing. Everyone has Mars and Venus in their natal chart. And I relate to them as the divine counterparts, the lovers, the in the same way I relate to Jupiter and Juno as the husband and wife. But there are many different expressions of relationship, partnership. Um, there are many different expressions of sexual identity, personal identity, and all of them are welcome here and all of them are, you know, expressed here in the chart. And all people, all beings, all life on this planet are reflections reflected in the natal chart as, um, you know, expressions of the divine. So Mars and Venus here, I'm just, you know, really, I'm on a hold that with, I'm holding these particular lenses with a lot of openness, open-mindedness, and also a lot of awareness and sensitivity to the particular um, lens through which I see. And, you know, it's not for everyone and it is not expressive of everyone. And I really honor that. Um, but I'm seeing everything as, you know, being contained within the chart. So then we move on to the Venus Libra cycle in the next month. And actually, this is not the right chart for that. So I'm going to have to switch for one second to um, the chart of the Venus and Libra because somehow Mercury is already retrograde for me. I missed something. Here we go. I'll share this one with you. Um, Venus moves her way into Libra and she does this as we get into the season of Scorpio. So following Venus doesn't mean we're not, I mean, I, we will be following the sun. We will be following Mars each month. We will be tuning in. They will be in a particular place. Obviously, Pluto is going to be still in Capricorn this whole time um, until we get into Pluto reemerging re into Aquarius. But Mars, the sun, they will be in Scorpio with Lilith, with Ceres. Mercury will have moved on all the way into Sagittarius. Um, we will be with Venus in Libra, making her way through her crossing of the South Node. So our November monthly class will be attuned to this South Node crossing. By this time, Jupiter in its retrograde cycle will be close to the end of its retrograde cycle, not entirely there yet, but very close. And, um, you know, we will be on the other side of eclipse season. So this is going to be a lot of the power of that portal coming through for integration, Anytime we have a retrograde season, anytime we have an eclipse season, there is the the months after 
especially with the eclipse portal, the three weeks after, um, the six months after, these are the, you know, with eclipses, it's like three days after, three weeks after, and six months, six months to the next set of eclipses. But so we will be within that cycle and we'll be working with this, you know, Mar masculine purification energy and also this Venus feminine um, harmonization, real the real integration of the eclipse portal. And then here we have Juno who, who will have moved on into the cycle where she's in the Virgo season, right? She's doing, she's following behind Venus and Mars in this integration. And a big part of that is her work. And then going back to, um, let's see, hopefully you can see. Where's my... I go back to. sharing here. In um, December, we will enter into the Venus and Scorpio cycle. I consider this part of the cycle, the underworld journey, not to say that Venus hasn't been in the underworld this whole time, but that this is a very strong um, culmination, fruitive time where we'll be harvesting the lessons of Venus and Scorpio, right? The underworld itself is a path and pertains to the Inanna story. There are many different versions of the Inanna story, and we'll tune into that as we work together through this cycle. But the underworld journey is the journey down into, so for Venus, it's going to be from Leo down through Virgo through the path of fire, the Via Combusta, which is the path in Libra down into the sign of Scorpio before she re-emerges in Sagittarius and then Capricorn. And, you know, in terms of Venus, it's her underworld journey of me morning, evening star cycle. Um, but for Inanna, it's the, the, you know, the traveling down to meet Pluto and following these gates, going through the gates of learning, of tests, of integration from the perspective of Scorpio, this is the journey of Scorpion, uh, Phoenix, Eagle. I even heard somebody describe that there were seven cycles of Scorpio that I didn't, I'd never heard before until this past weekend um, when I was at Singing Alive. And uh, he was telling me that it's like the scorpion, the snake, the phoenix. Oh, God. What was the other? Oh, my God. I'm going to totally forget. Anyway, and then the eagle. But there was like, oh, maybe there's the butterfly. I don't know what else it was, but there were, there were several other uh, animal totems. I've always thought of it as such a powerful thing that Scorpio pertains to these three different levels of consciousness. And I really work with all three. I think that all, I think that the shadow is one of those most misunderstood parts or even the resistance that we face Pluto being the archetype of facing the shadow, the resistance. And what's misunderstood is that like the shadow is something to be scared of that the shadow, the resistance is something that we are avoiding. The resistance is perpetuating evolution. The shadow is driving us towards the light, right? The light dispels the shadow. And that is a really beautiful thing, right? But even in the presence, the brightness of the light, the presence of the brightness is what creates, you can see here in this, I have bright, I have bright light on me. And you can see that the shadow comes, oh, there it is right behind me. And if we're looking in the mirror, if we're looking at ourselves, if we are looking deeply at ourselves, we actually can witness the shadow. We can see it play out. We can feel 
our resistance. We can feel those places inside of us that are so sick and tired of being sick and tired, right? We can feel those places inside of us that are in such deep pain that they rile, you know, and in that work, we can face that which seems to be keeping us from love, separating us from source, but is actually the perpetual driver pushing us to evolve, to return to source. That's the good news, friends. Don't be afraid of the shadow. Don't be afraid to face it. Don't be afraid to love it. Don't be afraid to embrace it. Don't be afraid to feel it all, to heal it all, because that's the way that we're going to do this work. And when we get into the Venus Scorpio cycle, we will be dealing with those, you know, procreative, sexual, reproductive core, right? Mars will be in the sign of Sagittarius, the core callings of the, the masculine element towards freedom, right? We will have we will be working with the core healing of our um sensual, sexual power, right? The core of our shadow being the calling to return to love. You know, sexual practice is um, in Tantra or in, um, in, in many Gnostic spiritual can be one of the highest ways of realization of God, of, of the divine, through the divine union, through the divine counterpart, but it is actually through a purification of the things, the underworld pieces, the lust, the shame, the um, uh, abuse of power, right? It is through like the releasing of those dynamics. And it's actually in that union, right? That the purity of the Holy Spirit of masculine, feminine, God in two forms of divinity, two external forms of divinity come together to unite in one true womb-centered form of divinity. And it's in the womb, in the total darkness of the inside of the feminine spirit, the feminine container, the dark womb, that actual life is created right? And then two souls become one and emerge into reality as one whole, beautiful expression of the divine. That is you, but that is me. But see, not everyone is procreated in love. In fact, most of us are uh, expressions of the divine, holy expressions of the divine. And maybe the counterparts that came together, our mother, father, or the parental, you know, the the spe sperm egg that united didn't always come through uh, holy incarnation, like the, the Virgin Mary or the Virgin Mother Father or the Divine Feminine Union, but often came through in ways that still reflected some of the trauma of the patriarchy, the trauma of our sexual expressions, the trauma. And this is a big part of our healing journey. So to really face these healings within our our own lives, in our own um, desire nature, and moving then into the Venus cycle in Sagittarius. When we get here, we get to a Venus who's with Mercury um, and a Jupiter. So the, the Venus and Mercury will be ruled by Jupiter. And Jupiter will be direct at its station degree. And so this is a returning to the embodiment of that true freedom, that true essential nature. We'll be working with a sun in Capricorn and that Capricorn sun is imbued with Saturn, which has already moved through its retrograde cycle direct and now with Neptune and I think of this, uh, you know, this is a sort of like we'll be walking towards the end of this cycle will be culmination of a lot of the mastery. This is a fruitive time of the wisdom, a harvesting of the wisdom 
of the darkness, right? We can develop new new thoughts, new beliefs, new ideas, new um, vision. Sagittarius has to do with vision of the future. We can be pointing our arrow towards the future from the feminine's perspective with Mars just right ahead in the sign of Capricorn. And, you know, last cycle, Mars and Venus came together in the sign of Capricorn with Pluto. And this cycle, what's different is that they come together in the sign of Aquarius. So they move and bridge beyond Saturn, Capricorn reality into Aquarius, a new earth, a new vision, right? And I see that Sagittarius cycle leading into the Aquarius cycle as being the bridge, right? And we have that, it comes at Sagittarius comes at the end, the beginning of the the new calendar year, the Gregorian calendar year. And then the Venus cycle culminates in this conjunction. And it's really just a few days after this Venus conjunction to Pluto that Venus conjoins with Mars, that they, the divine lovers, Venus and Mars come together in Aquarius. And interestingly enough, the, the whole, you know, here we got, um, Juno, the, the commitment counterpart retrograde. So coming back to that Virgo season. So we can know that like whatever we're working through in this Virgo retrograde with Mercury now with, um, with Venus, Mars and Jupiter all through as they come through Virgo will be previewing or pre precursoring this return that we receive relative to Juno in her retrograde. That also corresponds to Jupiter as Jupiter's retrograde will be complete and Uranus's retrograde will be complete when these, um, when they all come together in Aquarius and Saturn will be have, have completed its retrograde cycle Chiron will have completed its retrograde cycle and will be with the North Node ruled by Mars. So a lot of the wounds of the past resolved, turned into medicine, right? Turned into our gifts, turned into our strength, turned into our power. That's the beauty of all of this work. We can know right now, regardless of however messy, uncertain, tumultuous, cataclysmic, you know, our life is in this moment, look at all this resolution, Venus direct, Pluto direct, Mars direct, Mercury direct, Saturn direct, right? Um, Neptune direct, Chiron direct, Jupiter direct, Uranus direct, the moon and sun always direct, making that first quarter square in the beginning of the year. This is a really important kickoff of a whole new cycle. And I'm talking about a whole new soul cycle, a whole new soul cycle that is 248 years long, friends, a whole new soul cycle that we will get to live out as much as we get to live out. That's the beauty and blessing of these times that we are souls that are paving the way, literally paving the way with the Pluto bulldozer through Capricorn into the new cycle with Aquarius, right? We are paving the way for an evolution of living, of loving, of uh, of community, of humanity that our souls have been calling in for a Pluto and Capricorn lifetime. So we are paving the way together. So many of us meeting each other and recognizing, oh yeah, we've done this before. We did this dance before. We loved each other before. We killed each other before. We left each other before. We betrayed each other before. But now what are we going to do? Different relationship. We're going to relate to each other, one another differently. Now what are we going to do? Friendship, humanity, like 
community differently. We're going to create together. We're going to grow together. We're going to evolve together because that's what we're here to do. That's what we're here to do. We're here to love each other in a different way, in a new way. We're here to break the shackles of the past, to leave the past behind. That's the good news. We're here to turn the power of our personal will into medicine that we use to serve the individual, the collective, the relational, right? That. So when we have a planet on a node, right, um, we can know that we're really cata catalyzing a cycle of new, new fruitive creation, a new cycle when we have a planet on the south node, we can know that we're culminating, we're ending a cycle. We're going to be moving through this entire cycle the next six months together with Venus, Mercury, Mars making their fruitive, culminative, closing cycles with the south node. In my last evolution, love evolution class cycle, we move through a cycle with all of them coming through the north node right? Mars came through the North Node. I gave birth to my daughter, Emuna, as Mars did. Same Venus. Um, they all started a new cycle with the North Node when it was in Taurus and Scorpio. Um, Pluto squared the nodes just a few months back in July, right? That kicked off this dynamic push-pull between, hey, do we do the past of relationship in the same way? Do we keep repeating the patterns or do we transform it and do something new, right? Do we, and we can feel caught between the old and the new. We can be caught between the repetition of the past and the new. And I have heard David Green say, you know, before, until we anchor ourselves into doing the new, doing the old in a new way and doing the new, um, it can be really challenging for the soul. And I have felt that absolutely that this challenge of, wow, how getting sucked back into the past patterns is so challenging. But we can see by this chart that by February of next year, six months from you know now, um, that we will be in a completely new place relative and that the core uh, commitments of our lives with that those will be reflecting the deepest internalized soul growth that we will be walking into for the next cycle right and um it's really it's really helpful to know that so love evolution the container is a 6 months class series it will begin in september it will culminate in um the month, month of February. For any student who is a past Love Evolution student of mine, and if you're doing the full pay, which is, it's $250 for the full class series, for the full pay. If you're doing the full pay and you are um, a past student, you can use the code LOVER to take $50 off to pay what you paid last class series in full. If you're doing the monthly pay, um, you can use the code self love to take $15 off. And I would say that anyone who needs a, you know, if you need a discount, if you want to join me in this class series, if you need a discount in the class and um, you want to use that coupon code self love to take $15 off the per month. Um, please do feel to tune into your personal needs and use that at your discretion. I really trust that if you want to be in this container with me, uh, a way will be made. Please reach out to me if there's some other way or some other thing that you need in order to come together. Our classes include the monthly group transmission, which is a recorded live transmission each month on those dates that I went through. Um, heart coherence, which is my opportunity for you to drop in with me and practice with your own personal natal chart. Those I offer every month healing tools. And then we also come together every month for a new moon ceremony. Everything is rooted in this 
core transformative journey that we're taking to return to source, to return to love. That is the calling. Um, if you are also called to join me in the Growing Together group, uh, there is a bundle code, which you can get from me if you need uh, support with that. And Growing Together will be entirely devoted to students of astrology who are growing in their medicine, in their work, who are growing um, themselves professionally as healers, counselors, guides, and wanting to grow their astrology astrological practice, their um, personal practice, and growing their resources. And we'll be tuning in in that container more deeply to the Jupiter-Venus archetype, to the growth, and to what it is to call ourselves to grow, you know, to the next level. And there is an opportunity in that container. You will receive access to all of my core teachings as well as the new moon ceremonies as well as this private mentoring group that we'll be doing together so if you're wanting to join both of those containers there is an option for that on the website everything um, obviously you can choose to drop in with me in private sessions one-on-one -on -one. and for anyone who is in either container if you want to mentor specifically with me on a monthly basis um, with your personal chart in a private container, I, I give an additional discount for that. And those private sessions are available through the soul apprenticeship sessions. And those can be, those are scheduled every month. We do a one-on-one -on -one. and it's really such an incredible and powerful container um, for working with your own life content, your own soul content, one-on-one -on -one with me and, you know, continuing to do this ongoing work of evolution, right? And that is what we're all doing. We're all evolving. We're growing together. We are learning how to love. We are returning to our source together. And the, um, you know, the work that we do together is probably the most powerful. I mean, for me, it's been the most powerful and transformative work of my life. And I'm so deeply grateful to everyone who chooses. It is a choice. First of all, love is a choice. That In that choice between cooperation or resistance, we have also the choice to love, to answer the call to love, and we have the choice to resist love, to separate from source, to stay in our pain, to stay in our shadow. And I've done both all the time. I continue to learn through both. They continue to always call me back to the only thing that's true, which is love, which is love. I received that message the other day. Love is what's true. It's on my painting there. And um, everything else is the lie of separation. Um, often in my transmissions or in my new moon ceremonies, I tune into things or I pull a card um, or I, uh, you know, I ask for guidance. I tune in. I use in many different tools. I share all those tools with you. I'm working. Uh, I share the books that I'm working with. I'm just in preparation for love evolution and in uh, beginning to work with how to be an adult in relationships, the five keys to mindful loving by David Rico. Um, he was one of my teachers years ago when I used to work at a Buddhist meditation center and I worked with him directly and uh, really coming back to the core of what his work is. And I pulled a card for this transmission just to close us in this time. Um, and I got the perfume of Sophia. So it says, you will be able to create, you will be able to sense the best timing and approach to take. 
to create space for healing and resolution, connect with your body and ground yourself in the here and now with body-friendly practices. You will find your way intuitively and instinctively through every confusing circumstance where one moment you are sure the answer is no and the next moment you are sure it is yes. Give up trying to figure out the answer right now and remain open with a positive and relaxed expectation that clarity shall emerge spontaneously according to divine timing. So I really do find this to be true. Right now, there is so much uncertainty. I, I think a lot of this Virgo season has a lot to do with the confusion that our mind can face in the process of evolution. That push-pull dynamic between the nodes, the push-pull between resistance and cooperation, the truth that we are um, you know, always evolving, always growing, always learning what it is that love is, um, is always true inside of us, whether we're connected to it or not. And learning how to anchor into our body, into the wisdom that's within us, into the guidance. I mean, that is a big part of this container of working together, the container of ceremony, the container of practice and reflection and growth that we will each be finding our way with in our own expression, in our own way. And I am grateful to really be able to do that with you all and be able to honor and hold a container of that transformation together. So thank you so much for listening to this recording and for being with me today. Um, I am so grateful to be on this journey with you all and take good care. As always, please leave your comments. If there's something that touched you, if there's something you have a question about, if there's a desire in your heart or a prayer that you carry, um, leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are called to join me on this journey, please do, my friends. It is a blessing and an honor to travel with you and to journey together. Bye for now.